I feel like I should be singing um, on pause music or something. Okay. Well, love to introduce Helen Mack of um, Helen Mack Coaching. Over to you, Helen. Fabulous. Thank you, Dia. I'm delighted to be here sharing some ideas with the Wise Women Wednesday people. And it's lovely to have some wonderful, familiar, friendly faces in the room and a couple of people that I don't know. It's always always great to be with any of the Brava Women gatherings. And I just I, I love it. The energy is fantastic. So um, I'm going to talk very briefly about how to create best possible results in your business. And the lovely thing about the work that I do is of course, is that you can also apply it in your life in general, which is always wonderful. So my opening position is that hope is not a strategy. People sometimes say, oh, I hope my business will, will grow or I hope I'll get the right clients. Hope is not a strategy. I want to share with you some ideas that you can very uh, consciously apply to make a difference to your business and your life. And uh, you said three. I'm actually, I'm actually over, over <laughs> as always. So there's, it's three plus three plus one. So three is my lucky number. So we're doing three um, ideas, three steps, and then and then the one thing that will make it all happen. So here's the first three. Number one, eliminate the concept of not possible from your thinking. So often, regardless of how um, uh, positive and, and, and optimistic we are about things that happen inside our head, a little brain, a little uh, brain noise will happen. Oh, that's not possible. That's impossible. That's too hard. And as soon as we do that, our brain go. Our brain gives us permission to stop. Our brain actually stops looking for um, solutions and goes, oh, okay, well, if it's not possible, I won't look. So we have to learn to, that when that thought comes into our heads, we have to go, mm -hmm, yeah, I hear you. I'm going to look at something different. So it's a very simple but extremely powerful step to simply choose when you hear your, inside your head or out of your mouth, that's not possible, that's impossible, I can't do that. We need to edit that and say, hang on a minute, I'm going to look for a different way. The key to that is that we need to be optimising every opportunity. So this is just a little, uh, little uh, story bubble. Um, this is my beautiful husband, Lachlan, and his, our gorgeous grandson, Angus. They were the blue boys, both barracked for Carlton for their sins, um, both wore blue, <laughs> wore blue all the time. And this was them being, you know, two groovy blue boys. Lachlan at this time was uh, starting to develop symptoms of the disease that would eventually take his life. And we maximised optimized every opportunity that we could to give Angus a whole bunch of strong memories knowing that his bubbo as he called him was not going to be around forever so if you don't choose to optimize little opportunities that are given to you you lose out on getting the best possible result then you have to ask the question. So once you've recognised that I'm not going to do the po not possible, you have to ask this incredibly powerful question, and that is, what's possible? That's when you switch on your reticular activating system, you switch on your brain to looking for, well, how could I do that? How else could I approach that? Who do I know who's done it before? It opens up your brain to what could I do in this scenario? And so that, that, that two-word question, I believe, is the most powerful tool we have as small business owners to get the best possible results. It means that you are programming your brain con consciously and constantly to look for opportunities. This is a bit like when you're in, a, in the car park, looking, driving around a, a, a mall car park, looking for a car park, and all of a sudden you notice someone with their keys in their hand and you go, oh, where are they going? And you start looking for the car parks. When you choose to buy a car and you suddenly decide you're going to buy a red Mazda, what do you suddenly see on the streets? A million red Mazdas. They were always there, but your brain wasn't noticing them because they, it didn't think it was important to you. So you have to switch on your as. And then once you've done that, the third step is target best possible. So Use your analysis. Look at all of the things that you have as opportunities and say, okay, given my current resources, the amount of time I have, my network, et cetera, et cetera, what's the best possible outcome from this scenario? Then you can plan, and this is what I do with my clients once we've done that, then you can plan how you're going to implement that and you, how you're going to bring in the right people, processes, and systems to create that best possible outcome. So that's the first three bits not possible, eliminate not possible, ask what's possible, 
hugely powerful question and then go, okay, now that I know what's possible, all the options, I'm going to target the best possible. So here's the three steps to make that to make that happen. I want to share with you. This is a little. This, this is the love story part of the uh, of the, uh, the the show. So this is me getting married uh, just just a little bit less than three years ago in the library of my now husband's farm. Middle of COVID, May 2020. Um, we had 10 people in the room and 150 on Zoom. I believe that. Oops, not that button. Sorry. I believe <clears throat> that the life you live is a result of the choices you make. So I've already mentioned that I have uh, my late husband and as a result of the choices that he and I made when we were together, I was able to process his passing and move on as I know he wanted to into what I now call life 3.0. The life you live is a result of the choices you make. I could have made all kinds of other choices when Lachlan left me, but I decided to live on as a legacy of our love. I also believe that the business outcomes that you create and the life outcomes that you create are a result of the choices you make. We need to make great choices to create great results. So I feel very fortunate that Ian has landed in my life. So here are the other, the next three bits. The first is create clarity. Now I'm going to work, I normally go through details of how to create clarity. I'm going to give you just the dot points. If you'd like to learn more about this, I'm really happy for any wise women to get in touch with me and I'm uh, with, with no, no, uh, no strings attached, go through this in more detail because I'm very passionate about all of you being able to do this really well. So we need to go from the clarity level of mud, which is sticky and horrible and doesn't let us get what we want, through to washing away the obstacles and the stickiness to get to a water level of clarity. Then we need to solidify those goals to create a glass level of clarity, but then we have to go one step further and create what I call crystal clarity. And the reason we need to focus on getting crystal clear is because if you, are, if you shine a light through a crystal, you get a rainbow. You go from a single coloured light to multiple colours and it opens up all kinds of opportunities. So as you go through your uh, getting clear about what you want, you need to step up through those. Yeah, what are the obstacles? Wash them away, get solidified and then move to crystal. And the areas that you need to look at are getting your systems in place, getting organised in the way that you operate your business and then provide, get the support that you provide. And this is what I do with a lot of my clients is get their systems clear, organize their business around the people, and then help them get the support they need to step up to the next level. Crystal clarity. You then need to maximize your momentum. So this is the, the concept where you're thinking about um, if you have to move something really, really big, you often can't get it into momentum straight away. You've got to sort of rock backwards and forwards. The image in my head is always, if I, this gives away my age, push starting a car <laughs> when you used to be able to do that. But you couldn't just sort of get it into momentum straight away. You kind of get it rocking, get a little bit of momentum, get some other people to help. And then once you got it into momentum, making it go faster was even easier. The hard part is in the push. Um, and so in our businesses, we need to make sure that we're also doing that, that we maximise momentum. The message here is that any direction is better than none. If you're stuck, if you're in that mud level of, of clarity, if you're stuck, just make a first step in some direction. Get into momentum, move and then ask the universe for feedback. We've got some people in the room who are really, really good at that asking the universe piece, so tap into their expertise and knowledge if you can. But if you move, if you make a forward move and everything seems really, really difficult, then maybe that's not the right direction. But because you're in momentum, changing direction just a little bit is much, much easier. So take a step and then seek feedback. The universe will give you messages. If things are going smoothly and well, take another step in that direction. Keep yourself moving forward. And then my favourite, the third, is to maintain mindset. I've just had a lovely conversation with Natalia about her mindset work, and I think um, I do similar but different things in my coaching work, and this is around um, developing an attitude, what I call the leadership attitude, the achievement attitude of optimism. So optimism is the possibility mindset. Uh, the key thing to think about with optimism is that the first three letters are opt. And remember we talked about the power of 
choosing. To opt is to choose. And optimism is about looking, even the word means to seek out the best possible, to look for the good. That's why the sunflower is the symbol of optimism for me. They follow the sun, the sunflowers, look for the light. They look for the good in things. And so optimism is the uh, mindset that will activate your possibility thinking. And uh, I do a whole, whole lot of work with my clients on how to maintain an optimistic mindset. Good news, this is the sales pitch for optimism, not for me, but for optimism. Optimists outsell pessimists, and we're all in the business of selling ourselves, our businesses, our products, our services. Having an optimistic approach means that we will take the, take the actions that will deliver the results. Because we, in this group, I know we are all have an attitude of service and optimists also outserve pessimists because they have an attitude with their clients of what does my client need? What's the best thing I can do to get them the best result? Oops, I went back, let me, I lost one. And the third one is that optimists outlive pessimists. Yay! The reason for that is that optimists make better choices about their lifestyle, about their health, about their connections, about their community, and all of those things help us live longer, happier lives. So if, you have, if you're not sold on it already, um, have a chat with me and I'll show you some other stats on why optimism is a great choice for all kinds of reasons. So that was three plus three. Here's the final. Take action. All of those ideas are all very well, but you don't get orange juice from an orange by looking at it. You literally have to get the orange and squeeze it. And if you squeeze it with a lovely uh, handheld squeezer like this one, you'll get a little bit. But if you want to really take action, you need to get the, the best possible orange juicer to really activate uh, what the outcomes that you want. And as I've mentioned a couple of times, it's really about um, creating conscious choice. And for all of you in the room and all of you listening, um, there are lots of people around who can help you, A, make those choices, and B, stay in touch with that choice and help you stay on path to create best possible results for your business and for your life. So closing quote, optimism is a strategy for making a better future. Because unless you believe that the future can be better, you're unlikely to step up and take responsibility for making it so. And all of you in the room today and those listening to this have already started to take that step up to take responsibility for creating best possible results in your life. So that's my 10 minutes. Oh, I didn't, I, I picked up the wrong one. I did the same thing for Zonta International. That was meant to be a QR code for um, connecting to me on LinkedIn. So if you'd like to find me on LinkedIn, I'm, I'm Helen Mac CSP. That's the way to find me on LinkedIn. And if you'd like a copy of my my ebook, Optimizing, Optimizing Outcomes, The Fine Line Between Optimism and Delusion in a Leadership Space, um, send me an email. I'd love to share it with you. So, oh, there's the QR code, two-step. So if you'd like to jump on that, that's the QR code to my LinkedIn profile. I thought I had a Brava logo there, but there you go. Um, and I hope that that has been useful. I look forward to helping you with any questions or comments you might have. Thank you, Helen. I'll just 